it's Stephanie here and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be playing with the new photo booth strip dynamics. This is a really fun die because it features the three squares and looks like a strip of photos that you would get from a photo booth. And it also has a really fun feature in that it works with our square trio of shaker pouches. So this is one single pouch and it's designed to fit perfectly into the openings in the photo booth strip. We're not going to be using it in our project today, but I did want to show you how it works with this die. So I went ahead and die cut this from white cardstock and I have the three interior pieces on screen as well. And we're gonna do some stamping on these to create our little photos. I have the two girl images from the Friends at First stamp set. This is one of my favorite stamp sets and it worked perfectly for this because they are sized just the right size to fit into these little photo frames. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make it look like they were kind of taking pictures of themselves. And then we're also going to add a little picture of their dogs in the middle as well but first we need to go ahead and stamp them. So since we're only gonna be stamping this very small portion, I'm going to use some adhesive in my Misty just to kind of hold that little square in place. I'm just gonna put it right onto my little grid mat there and then press that square on. And that's just gonna ensure that when I do the stamping, because a lot of the stamped area isn't going to get covered in ink, it's actually going to stick onto that mat and pull everything up when we lift the Misty door. And you'll see what I mean here in just a minute. And because I know that that's gonna happen, I wanna make sure that that square doesn't move so that we're able to do a double stamp. So I'm gonna go ahead and take Extreme Black ink. This is a Copic friendly ink, and I'm applying it just to the top area of the stamp since we only need to stamp her head. I'm gonna very carefully pull that back off of the stamp, and I'm gonna stamp it a second time to get a really nice solid black image. And since we adhered it in place, that square stayed exactly the same place as the first time, so we were able to easily line that up for a second stamp. I'm now moving on to the second girl image and doing the exact same thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp her onto that square. And then for the last one, we're going to do two of the little dog images from this set. When I first started stamping the dogs, I was just going to put them side by side and leave a little bit of space between them. But I realized as I started stamping that this area to do the stamping is just too small and I needed to do a little bit of masking so that I could overlap the stamped images. So I just went ahead and stamped out that first dog onto a piece of masking paper and very quickly just cut around the side of him that I needed for the mask. I laid it directly on top of the original stamped image and now I'm just gonna position my little dog in place. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow that mask to cover up the original dog so that we don't have an overlap of the stamped lines. Once I have that little guy stamped on there, I can go ahead and remove it and take off the masking paper and you can see that we have both of the little dog images there in the center. Okay, so now that we have all of our images stamped out, I'm gonna go ahead and start to color them. So like I mentioned, I am using Copic markers to do the coloring. I just find them quick and easy, and I generally know how to use them, sometimes not so much, but for the most part, they're pretty easy to color with, and I really like the blend that you get with them. Now, you don't have to use Copics. You can use colored pencils. You could even do watercolor. That would be a really cool look for a card like this as well. But I'm just gonna quickly go through the coloring here. I'm using usually two to three shades, just so I can get some nice blending. And I'm just kind of jumping around from each of the different photos as I use a light color so that I can kind of save time by using that color all at once. So you'll see here I just kind of jump all over until I have all of the color added. I'm using some muted brown colors and grays for the two dogs. So I have some E browns here for this larger dog. And I'm just doing a little bit of shading to give him a little bit of shadow. And then for the little guy there, I used a couple of warm gray markers. I wanted him to appear mainly white and not really dark. So I didn't put a lot of color on him. I also added some pink to each of their cheeks just to give them a little bit of blush and then I used a very bright pink color for the little bow on the dog's head. Now moving back onto the two girl images, I colored the first one there with some green markers. That's my favorite green combination which is YG01, YG23, and YG17. And then I used a purple combination to do the other girl sweater. I'm also gonna move on to the little smaller elements. So for the coffee cups, I did both of the lids in a dark brown color, and I did the little cozies that are around the cups with a lighter tan color. I used some dark gray for the purse straps, and then I'm gonna use BG32 to color in the shirts on both of them. I decided to keep those exactly the same. And then for the other girl here, I'm gonna use E31 and E53 for her hair. This is a new combination for me. I've been really practicing with different skin and hair colors, so I'm looking forward to incorporating some of those in my coloring. And then I thought her hair was a little bit too light, so I came in with some E34 just to add a little bit more darkness. I'm gonna finish both of these girls off with the same pink on their cheeks that I did on the two little dog images. And then just to kind of make the photos not be completely stark white, I'm gonna use BG10 and just kind of pull that color from the images out. This is just gonna help everything stand out a little bit more since the frame that we're gonna put these in are going is also going to be white. So I don't wanna have the photos blend with that photo frame. 
Okay, so once we have that done, all of our little images are colored, and I just think the coloring just brings them to life. I just love how they all look, and they're gonna look so awesome in this photo frame when we have it finished. Now the easiest way I find to put them back into the frame is just take some double-sided adhesive. I'm using some score tape here. I have a thicker one and then one that's a little bit um, thinner in width. And I'm just adding a piece of this to the back of the photo frame. And what that's gonna do is give me a sticky surface on the inside that's going to allow me to easily place these photos back in. So I'm just kind of lining them up and I was trying to decide how I wanted to put them. I thought I wanted the dogs in the middle at first, but then I kind of second guessed it, but I did go back to that and decided to do it that way. I like the pop of color on the top and bottom by having the two different girl images who have the colorful shirts. So I went ahead and put those into the frame and now you can see our finished photo frame. I love how this turned out. I love the sizing of the images. And like I mentioned, if you wanted to make it shake, you could have also used that shaker pouch as well. So now that we have that part done, we can go ahead and start to work on the rest of the card. So I have a grout gray card base. This is an A2 size card, so it measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I have our photo strip that we've already created. I have a second one that I've cut out from gravel gray that we're gonna use for a shadow. And then I have one of the new fishtail flag trios that I've die cut from snow cone cardstock. This is the middle size of that fishtail flag trio. And then I have some additional stamps from that stamp set that we're going to use to dress up the card and add our sentiment. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add some stamping to our card base. I'm not gonna have a lot of detail on this card aside from the photo strip and the sentiment fishtail banner. So I wanted to add a little bit something to the background since I am using a gray color. Now I did some stamping with the grout gray ink first on a test piece to see if I liked the tone on tone stamping, but I felt like the little coffee cups kind of blended too much into the background and you couldn't see them as much as I wanted to. So after a few different inks that I tried out, I ended up going with the Antique Linen Distress Ink. Now I don't normally stamp with distress inks, but it worked out fine for this since the image is pretty small and it's just line art. And I loved the color of this ink against this grout gray background. So I just went ahead and added this little stamped coffee cup all over the background. I kind of moved it around and made some of them go in different directions. And then I'm gonna take the two little heart stamps that I have from the stamp set as well. And I'm gonna take them each one at a time and I'm gonna add some heart detail kind of mixed in between the cups. I just like how it fills up the space a little bit more and I like the little heart detail added to the design. Once I was happy with the stamping and had the background nice and filled up with all of those little images, I moved on to layering my photo frames. So I have the gravel gray one that I die cut and I'm just laying it underneath of that white one. I used some liquid glue and I just am slightly offsetting it. And this is just going to give a little bit of a shadow and really help that white frame to stand out against the background. Now I wanna put this straight up and down on the card. I was originally going to do it on a diagonal, but I liked the look of it better going straight up and down. I have a hard time with things going diagonally. I like really nice even margins and I generally like things to be straight. So I added a bunch of foam adhesive to this to make sure it would be nice and sturdy and now I'm just gonna line it up on the right hand side of the card. I am gonna leave a little bit of space there on the side so that I have room to put the part of the fishtail banner on there. But before we start to assemble that, I need to stamp out the sentiment. So this sentiment here I'm gonna use has two different size fonts in it. And I'm gonna cut it apart and use the larger part of the font on the fishtail banner. And then I'm gonna use the smaller part on a different part of the card. So I cut it apart with my scissors. You definitely don't need to do this. You can just kind of mask it off if you prefer not to cut your stamps. I never have a problem when I cut mine apart. If I wanna use them how they were intended, I just put them back onto the acrylic block exactly how they came. So now that I have the sentiment stamped on there, I put some regular adhesive on the part that's gonna overlap the photo frame. And then I put some of the same foam adhesive on the end there because it's gonna hang off and I want it to be the same as the photo frame. I tucked in the little extra piece on the side and now I'm tucking the other piece over on the other side of the photo frame to kind of make it look like it was wrapped around that photo strip. This is an idea that I got from one of our design team members, Nicole. She did this during the countdown and I loved how it looked and I really wanted to replicate that on my card. So thank you to Nicole for that inspiration. And now I just need to go ahead and finish the second part of that sentiment. So I just stamped this onto black cardstock and I'm adding white embossing powder. I used my heat tool and heat set that, and then I cut this into a very small strip, and now I'm just gonna tuck it over onto the side of my photo strip. I wanted it to kind of make it look like it was coming out from underneath of there, and I love the black cardstock with the white sentiment. 
After I had that in place, I'm just adding some finishing touches to the card. I added some clear sequins with some sprinkled sugar stickles in the center just to kind of cover up that hole. And now I'm just going through with a white gel pen. I'm using a Sharpie paint marker. I just get it at my local um, supply store. And I'm just adding some highlights to each of these images. And then that is going to complete my card. So I have this really cool photo strip scene that we've created. There are so many possibilities with this die because you can mix and match it with so many of your different stamp sets. I hope you got some ideas on ways that you can use this. All of the supplies I've used are listed in the video description below. As always, I appreciate you being here and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks so much for watching.